I'm an artist. I started painting when I was a kid with my brother. And in 2017, I became the first artist that got to use Singularity Black, a carbon nanotube black, a structural black, or what most people know as the blackest black. Singularity Black is a carbon nanotube black that was developed for NASA. So how did I become the first artist that got to use it? Well, the simple answer is beer. <laughs> a few years ago, I also taught a class at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston called Drawing in Pubs. People would pay the museum to find out where to meet me at a bar to teach them how to draw. And the head research scientist at Nanolab was one of the students. And he didn't talk much about what the nanotech he was working with at the time. But he invited me up to the lab saying, do you want to see something cool? I immediately knew what I was looking at when I, was, when I went to the laboratory. There were little pieces of aluminum foil, a bolt that disappeared into itself. I was looking at the holy grail of art material, the blackest black. And then he asked me, do you want to make something with this? And I said, hell yes, I do. <laughs> Um, I had no idea what I was going to do with it, um, but I figured that out. So let's start off with what is Singularity Black. Singularity Black is a carbon nanotube structural black paint that was designed for NASA so that they could see further into space. Let me, let me show you what I mean. With these lights on right now in my eyes, I can only see so far, so I need to block them in order to see further down the row. NASA wanted to do that, except they wanted to coat a foil in space so they could see past the sun and see further with it. And then I had the opportunity to make art with it. Um, so I immediately went back to the studio. I was thinking, oh, man, uh, this would look really cool black. This would look super cool black. My dog hid from me for a while. <laughs> and I finally started to catch up on what I wanted to do with it. I started to look at my work as, in painting uh, as a reference point of what I could do. Um, and in fact, what we're looking at right now, this is actually paintings of what carbon nanotubes and singularity look like in carbon nanotubes. Uh, it flattens out a three-dimensional object so that it looks two-dimensional. Um, it actually traps the light and energy. One way to think about it is the structure of cotton candy, uh, how it's all light and fluffy, and it's just this network of candy strand, of sugar strands. Singularity Black is this network of carbon nanotubes. It's more air than it is anything else. Light and energy can penetrate it, bounce around, get absorbed, and doesn't come back to your eye. Uh, and so, what was I going to do with it? So, a lot of my paintings that I've made, they reference, I like to take things from my childhood, write colorful things, objects that are very, very interesting and beautiful to me that have a deeper meaning. And I've been painting gummy bears for a while. So I thought, what if I took this little jewel-like object from childhood and made it big, heavy, dark, and light-sucking? So I cast a gummy bear in iron, and I placed it on a spinning carousel of all colors, and that was the Black Iron Ursa. Black Iron Ursa was the first piece of artwork in carbon nanotube to be released outside of any sort of controversy. Singularity Black is and was and still is available to everybody. I was the first artist that got the chance to use it, but in no way am I the only or any sort of gatekeeper. The, my first, in, in making this first work with Nanolab, we also started to talk, they would bring me in every so often, we'd talk about launching this to the arts community, making it available, and philosophically, we completely agreed that a brand new material like this needed to be launched to everybody. It's artists who truly are the ones who take a new medium and take it to new heights. So that's about the time that they brought me in as artists in residence. So basically, as artists in residence, we then started to talk about other material concerns and how nanotechnology and the material sciences that have happened in the last 20 years could also change things in the way that Singularity Black did. So I'm now their artists in residence helping them do nanopigment development. Uh, we're also working on structural whites and structural colors, bringing those to your, to your palettes, um, as well as uh, some velvets and some new pigment development. So I also got to make my own body of work. So I started to explain, explore further how I could make objects that are three-dimensional with no object light, no object shadow, disappear into themselves. Things like this piece looks like a five-pointed star, but in reality, it's a three-dimensional six-pointed star. 
With no object light and shadow, objects that look like something, sculptures that look like something from one end and not another. Also void spaces, right now on small scale, soon to be large scale. Installations like this where I can make it look like you have no head. And uh, at the same time, figuring out how uh, I was gonna use all of this new nanotechnology into new works. And I started to display them and put them around, and I started to think, what can be some of the iconic things in black that I wanted to do? Ultimately, one thing that I wanted to do immediately with my history as a painter was make the blackest black painting on the planet. So that's what this is. <laughs> on canvas, carbon nanotubes, uh, it's swallowing something like 99% of light. But I started to think about black and the iconography of it, and what, what was something that I could make that had impact? And I thought, the little black dress. It's by far, it's super iconic. They exist in most closets, and there's a reason for it. You look damn good in one. Um, and so this is the blackest little black dress on earth. And what every little black dress on earth does, this does tenfold. It's been worn a handful of times by um, uh, models that I've had and the designer who I collaborated with. And each time, it's been stunning. A perfect three-dimensional person walks into the room completely flattened, into a silhouette. It's, you can hear a pin drop every time. For a lot of the photographs that I took the first time, I backdropped uh, anyone who was in the dress with the, uh, the 42, which is, that's the blackest black painting on the planet. That's the circle. And so the work started to go out. I'd start to do shows with them. Uh, and I started to engage with people about what this meant, the issue of the blackest black and making void things. About a year ago, I was lucky enough that I got to display my works and the dress itself got to walk among the collection at the Museum of Fine Arts. And I started to realize that this started to do different things and, get, and elicit different reactions out of people, and I wanted to pick that a little bit. And one suggestion that came up and again over and over and over was, what if you did this illusion that a lot of us know as the face base? That, uh, that vase that were the outer contours show the silhouette of a face on both sides. And it would be absolutely cool to take that object and coat it in singularity or structural black, because it would have no object sh shadow, no object light. It would function better than it ever did before. But I, wondered, I wanted to make something that was the next level with it. I, wanted to, I started to contemplate, could I create something more of the entire three dimensions of a head and in a different way? Play with the positive and negative space in a kinetic sculpture. So I came up with this idea, made some sketches, checked in with some sculptor friends of mine, and had the idea, is it, A, is this sort of thing possible, and B, have you seen it before? And the answer was, no one's seen something before, like this quite before, and it was possible. So I took the negative space around my head, had it three-dimensionally rendered, inverted, and printed in 3D ceramic towers. And then they're both motorized in unison, and when they spin, they actually create a sculpture made out of thin air of my head rotating. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. It's, it's actually really cool. This piece makes me happy. Like when I show this, I mean, I have a, a big body of my work, and if you Google me, you'll find this out. It's traditionally oil painting and things on the wall. And, you know, nothing's worse for an artist than someone just not acknowledging a piece or just walking right by it. Um, this piece is really fun. I love the engagement that a lot of people have, like, like you just kind of did, is there's an aha moment. There's most people, they'll look at it, and it's very abstract, and they can't tell what's going on. And especially if it's like a Friday night opening, and you've got your like opening judgment face on. And like, you can see when that moment clicks, and they get what's going on, and it's like, and there's like just laughter and smiling. It's, it's very, very fun to play with. So anyway, this is a piece that I titled The Invisible Man. Uh, so, I also started to think about what it meant to make something void black. Like, what, what is that? It's not just dark, it's void. And so I started to think about, after I, you know, as we all do, move away from home and family, when I go back and visit, in my old room was the teddy bear that I used to, like, help me go to sleep. Like, most people have a blankie or a teddy bear or something like that. But after a while, when I go back, I knew it was my bear, but that connection was gone. It just wasn't there. 
And so I wondered, could I take a teddy bear, void it out with singularity black, and then place it on something like any grandmother's, like any of our grandmother's Afghans, except remove all of the color from it, and place it in a space? Could I evoke, in reality, that same sort of feeling that I felt when I, that loss of connection? And so that's where Gone Bear came from. When the, first two, when, the first, when the two pieces finally came together, melded in that way, it had that same feeling in an eerie way. And it was something that I could never do before in just paint and plaster or in a drawing. And so that's what I'm going to announce today is the idea for some pieces that I want to make in the future. I lost my brother when I was a kid, the same brother who put a paintbrush in my hand for the first time to a motorcycle accident. And at some point in the future, I intend to find the same mic and model of motorcycle he was riding black it out, wrecked, placed on its side. The impact and hard tr loss of death, I think, is a very, very shared feeling that we all have. And in parallel to that project, I also want to find an automobile that's been in a horrific accident and paint it entirely in singularity black and have it on display as a piece. Singularity Black is allowing me to finally be able to say things in my artwork that I've never been able to say before. Singularity Black was developed so NASA and scientists could see further into space and do things that haven't been, able, that haven't been done before. And for me, as an artist, having the opportunity to be the first one to use it, it's definitely allowing me that sort of access in my own world. But when I go to the lab every week, I'm also trying to allow that same access to every single artist or creator or even magician who wants to use it. Uh, there's a lot of the nanoscience that we're working on that I'm making sure we stay open about as soon as we create it. It's very, very important to the entire project. Um, it's very exciting to be a part of a team like this that's genuinely creating brand new materials for people to use. And every time something ha happens at the lab, it's an honor for me to be able to share it with everybody. Um, it's, uh, it's something that I care about very deeply. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs>